I know this is a bold statement, but I'm pretty sure I have created one of the most useful and ultimate adventure rigs ever. This is a 2002 F350. I'm gonna walk you through what I did to create what I believe to be one of the most useful and effective adventure rigs out there. It is heavy, but it has so many useful features and functions and uh, ultimately has taken care of us as we've been traveling all over the country, um, been on many road trips, being able to camp inside of it, outside of it, whatever you wanna do, this truck has been perfect. So I'm gonna show you everything that I've done to this vehicle. We'll start with the engine. It's a V10, it's a 6.8 liter V10. It is just an incredible motor, so reliable, so useful. And the reason that I ended up going with this truck was because it's a six speed. So it's the, the five speed with low range as well, the ZF6 transmission, it is externally cooled, works really well for towing. Um, you've got great range out of it. Um, there's some contemplation about whether a ZF5 or a ZF6 is a better option, but in this case, I've got the ZF6, so that's what we're gonna stick with. All right, on the front, I've got the ARB bumper. I ended up finding it used actually. Um, there's no winch inside. At some point, that could be something that I would do, but I ended up hooking up these uh, ox beam fo uh, fog lights, um, and so they're on the regular light switch with the fog lights as well. I've got Hellas on the front here, and I've got some cowl lights. Um, those are a yellow light. They're an ox beam as well, and they actually work really well. They do provide, because the truck is white, there's so much glow off the hood. I don't know if I'd do that again, but ultimately for driving on back roads, being able to set up camp at night, um, so on and so forth, uh, they shine off to the sides and they actually work really well. As you can see, I said it was a 2002. I did a front end swap. I replace the bumper and then I have the, the newer grill, the 0506 grill with the uh, updated headlights. There were some hella bulbs in there. Now there are some ox beam off-road uh, bulbs. The tires, got some Cooper AT3 um, tires that I really like. At this point, I've got 60,000 miles on them and you can hardly see what the wear is. So if you look at these, like this is the wear bar right in there that you can barely see, but ultimately there's still an incredibly deep tread for a full-size pickup at 60,000 miles. I've gone through two sets of KO2s and I got about 40,000 miles out, out of them on the same truck and we tow our trailer all the time with these. Also in there, you can see Bilstein shocks front and rear um, ended up going with the yellow ones. They work really well. The 5100s are great, but they're a little bit stiffer than what I wanted. Um, these work really well for off-road purposes. And then I have the updated mirrors um, because obviously the visibility out of the lower mirror, <clears throat> lower convex and the really tall top mirror is perfect. So anyway, um, now we'll go inside because I've done a few things on the interior that I have been wanting to show off for a little while. So as we get into here, it looks completely stock, which for the most part it is. Um, one thing that I added, so I have the Hella lights and the Oxbeam um, cowl lights right on the front. And what I ended up doing was running a switch on the inside. Um, I ended up running this in order to be able to easily hook things up. So right underneath the hood um, on the driver's side, I put a fuse panel and I can quickly and easily wire in lights. Um, this is hooked up. So I've got the grill lights, um, that are the Hellas. There's the cowl lights on there. And then underneath the truck, I've got a Vire compressor and for traveling, for towing, um, an onboard compressor cannot be beat. It is top tier. It is like one of the most important things that I would encourage anybody to have that was, um, going to be traveling and towing trailers and things because, so many times I will pick up a trailer and it will have um, low tires. And so then you got to take a chance on getting to a uh, gas station, service station, whatever, to be able to fill up your tires. Anyway, um, then another thing that I did, which you can barely see in here, is uh, I ran my lightning cable um, down there. There's a USB port and it runs up through here. And then I can pull out my lightning cable for my phone in order to hook up to the stereo. Stereo is nothing special. It's a Kenwood Echelon. Um, I would definitely do that again. Um, 
there's some probably some better stereos out there uh all i wanted was the backup camera for hooking up trailers in the powerpoint i've got a usb c actually two usb c's and a, a usb a um both are 3.0 ports they work really well the Takancho brake controller and then uh which is the p3 controller and then uh the manual floor shift so so obviously you've got the six speed transmission you've got the the manual floor shift into four low four high and that works pretty well um weather tech mats in here in the back seat i have not done a lot it is pretty much just a back seat um and underneath the seat though is where i have the the amp which you can barely see there but i have a kicker amp and sub all in one which works really well because it doesn't take up too much space it's really lightweight it's simple um, and is very effective on the side of the truck <clears throat> now on the side of the truck i've got a ladder mounted it to this so here's where the system gets a little bit more uh, detailed into what I've done. So I've got a tall canopy because I wanted the height. Now, to be honest, I don't love the look of them, but it has been very, very effective. I wanted to be able to camp in here. I wanted it to be useful. So on top, I've got a Yakima rack. I've got the tall Lear canopy. And then on the side, I built these plates. So there's an eight inch steel plate right here. And on top of, so that goes underneath the canopy on top of the bed rail. The canopy is bolted to the, um, what am I trying to say? The canopy is bolted to the plate and then the canopy and the plate bolt to the bed rail. And then there's this on top of it. And the whole idea of this was wanting to be able to get the canopy off of the truck very easily. So I've got access to an engine hoist in a shop so I can hook up a tie down to each corner and then I can actually hoist it off of here. Um, or if it's in a carport, if you want to do it manually, it doesn't really matter. But ultimately I created that for speed and capabilities. Now down the road, I have ta I've talked about, thought about, um, getting tongue tied there, um, taking these channels and mounting, um, being able to mount a mountain bike in there and being able to fix them to the side of the canopy. Um, I haven't actually figured out what I want to do there just yet. Um, but that is an option. The ladder that my brother built for me, um, <clears throat> runs from here. It mounts at the, this system, and then it goes down into a torque lift camper tie down. And so that's what we designed for there. These things, if you're curious, because one time I saw somebody driving around with these and a ladder rack. It's a modular ladder rack. And it's uh, the Adirac system. And so I'll put a link to that. And it actually works really well. I've used it originally. I used it as a ladder rack. I used it for hauling paddle boards and things. And then now I just utilize the rails and um, don't actually have the ladder rack on there. Um, and I don't really want to haul ladders. I just want to haul paddle boards up on the roof. So that works well. Over here, I've got an ARB awning, which I utilize from time to time. I mounted it actually to the canopy, and you can kind of see the bracket in there. Um, it works really well. It pulls out. Um, I will say the one mistake that I made is that it's tapered with the canopy, um, or it's angled with the canopy instead of being vertical. So when you pull the awning out, it, uh, it uh, flexes down a little bit more than I would have preferred. Um, going inside... To the truck like i said underneath there's the via air compressor going into the back of the truck in the canopy i have set up the part that i'm most proud of right here so i've got the the deck system ended up putting those deck drawers in to be able to hold uh video camera equipment um, i'm a photographer or videographer or i have been um, i've done that professionally in the past not as much anymore um, but i put it in there to hold equipment so you pull out the drawer and then i've got the uh, hose reel for the onboard compressor um, and then being able to hold and utilize uh, those four tool tools and other things also i'll do a full a detailed walkthrough of what i use the uh, deck drawers for but a lot of times for uh, like bike equipment like bike tools and uh, helmets and everything um right on top of the deck drawers i put astroturf and part of that is because i wanted a place to camp 
my dog absolutely loves hanging out back here, but also um, I wanted a place to camp. And so I put it down on here. I ended up getting the track system that Decked has and being able to utilize that for tying things down. And I put the AstroTurf down and then I put the tracks on top of it and then screwed those in and they hold the AstroTurf down so well. It is a perfect system. Um, in the back, there's a flush mount toolbox because I do have a truck with an eight foot bed and um, being able to utilize that for storage or more importantly, because nothing is, well, I would say 99% of the time, there's nothing in that box, but it keeps things from falling forward. Now on the roof, I built this system, which you can see, and um, I built it out of aluminum frame. So it attaches to the underside of the Yakima landing pad towers. Um, I think the landing pad is the footing of them. The control towers, I think is what they are. Um, <clears throat> so it mounts to the bottom of that. I used a uh, angle, um, aluminum angle and uh, steel brackets in order to attach that. And I can mount the traction boards up there. I can mount the shovel up there and it actually just ends up uh, working really well, keeping everything out of the way. So that's awesome. Um, so that's the back of the truck. The bumper, I ended up mounting a rough country uh, steel bumper on there and uh, utilizing the backup lights and uh, really like the amount of illumination that I get. They're not on a separate switch. They are on the reverse. And uh, I really like having them all built in and uh, they work really well for me. So anyway, uh, last thing that I did was the running boards. I think they're off of a 2011, 2012. Um, at some point, those will probably be pulled off of there and I'll put something else on, but claim to have found and built to be the ultimate in adventure vehicles. It's perfect. It works well. It's fun. It's functional for my family. It's fairly bulletproof. Um, the V10, if you have not had a chance to drive a V10, you're missing out. The V10 is phenomenal, and I, tr I lost like a mile per gallon going from a 6 liter to a V10. Um, it's not that bad, and, uh, and the trucks are just so, so, so affordable to maintain, and uh, you know, you lose about a thousand pounds in the front end for off-road capability. So um, it's perfect for what I need. It does what I need it to. It pulls a trailer all over the country, and uh, it's been really effective, so... Anyway, if you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you need links for anything. I would love to um, touch base with you and uh, help out, answer any questions that you may or may not have. And uh, have an incredible day. Thanks for watching.